China Evergrande has averted a default for the second time this month, though questions remain over the company's ability to cover hundreds of millions of dollars in liabilities due in the coming weeks. The real estate giant has reportedly sent more than $47 million it owed to bondholders. That interest payment was due late last month, but a 30-day grace period gave the company more time before creditors could officially declare a default. Evergrande is one of China's largest home and office builders, but has more than $300 billion in debt on its books. That's roughly the same amount as its assets. It's unclear where the company got the money to make its latest payment, but according to reports, the government in Beijing has urged Evergrande's billionaire founder, Wei Kahyan, to dip into his personal wealth to keep creditors at bay. Now, for more, let's go to Einar Tangen. He's a political and economic affairs commentator and a senior fellow at the Beijing-based think tank, Taihe Institute. Welcome to the program, Einar. Now, Evergrande's avoided the default, but at least three other Chinese real estate companies have not been so lucky, and that's raising worries among investors given the size of the sector relative to the Chinese economy. So should we expect more dominoes to fall, or is this as bad as it's going to get? Well, I think you're going to see uh, the government moving fairly quickly. Now, uh, keep in mind, uh, they're not as concerned about equity holders as they are bondholders and ultimately uh, those people who actually put, put money down on units that have yet to be completed. There's about 1.2 to 1.5, depending on who you talk to, uh, units out there that need to be completed. Uh, I can assure you those probably will be. Uh, debt holders, um, the issue there is that you have a, you know, a very liquid situation, uh, but uh, in terms of the actual assets, there's enough assets to cover it. So it's a liquidity issue. And there was a meeting with the National Development Reform Commission, the NDRC, as they call it. And it looks like there will be some effort to um, organize the market so this debt can either be uh, restructured, which will take the bondholders' uh, acquiescence, uh, or there will be some sort of liquidity device, possibly. I'm not, uh, I can't pr project that. So, yes, the government will step in. Uh, they have. Uh, a lot of this has been caused by a sharp downturn uh, in the number of units being sold. Uh, this has been due, in fact, uh, it's kind of a vicious cycle. As people realize that there's weakness uh, among these developers, they're less inclined uh, to put money down on housing. Now, the Chinese economy slowed down in the third quarter, though officials in Beijing are confident that this is just a temporary blip. Is there a chance that if a real estate crash does happen, however unlikely that may be, that it could derail China's recovery from the pandemic? Well, you know, if this was the United States or Europe, I would say absolutely yes. But, you know, China has a different kind of economic toolbox than uh, most, uh, than all countries, I would say. Uh, they can apply direct pressure. They can, um, in, in terms of actually having their um, SOEs, uh, you know, recharge the uh, industry, they can do more direct investments. Uh, they could, in essence, take over these um, um, units if they felt that they had to. So it's a very, very different uh, scenario. But they're gone are the days when people can invest money in China in the real estate market and expect a blank check from the uh, Chinese government. They're going to protect their own people. They're going to protect the, the reputation of China in terms of the debt market. Uh, but equity holders, beware, do not make false assumptions. Right. Still a lot of arrows in Beijing's quiver there. Thank you so much, Aina Tangen, joining us from Beijing. Thank you. And that's all from Business for Now.